income elasticity of demand tells us how much our demand for a given product or service changes as our income changes. Normally, we see the demand for a product or service go up if our income rises and go down if our income drops. The products and services that have income elasticity of demands that are positive numbers are these types of products and are called normal goods and services. Products and services that have negative income elasticity of demands are termed inferior goods and services. This is the equation for calculating the income elasticity of demand. It is important to remember that the equation is calculated fundamentally the same as other elasticity coefficients, except in this case we use income amounts in the denominator. Steak might be considered a normal good, and ramen noodles might be considered an inferior good, because as our incomes rise, we may eat more steak and less ramen noodles, and as our income drops, we may eat less steak and more ramen noodles. What if we wanted to know if two products or services were substitutes or complements? Do economists have a tool to determine this? The answer is yes. Cross-price elasticity of demand is the tool economists use to determine the relation ship between the price of one product and the quantity demanded of another. This is what the equation for cross-price elasticity of demand looks like. It is important to remember that the equation is calculated fundamentally the same as other elasticity coefficients, except in this case we use the quantity of one product in the numerator and the price of another in the denominator. Substitute goods have positive cross-price elasticities of demand. If good A is a substitute for good B, like coffee and tea, then a higher price for B will mean a greater quantity consumed of A. Complement goods have a negative cross-price elasticity. If good A is a complement for good B, like milk and cookies, then a higher price for B will mean a lower quantity consumed of A. We can connect the concept of elasticity with the labor and financial markets that we discussed in chapter four. We remember that the price of labor was the wage, and the quantity of labor was the amount of labor supplied by individuals. Now we can calculate the elasticity of labor supply by using this knowledge and this equation. This coefficient is calculated and interpreted in the same manner that price elasticity of supply and demand are. In the financial market, the price of money is the interest rate, and the quantity is the amount of dollars transacted in a financial market. Savings of households and individuals are the supply side of financial markets. We can calculate the elasticity of savings and the coefficient will give us insight into the supply of money based on the changes of interest rates. Here is the equation. This coefficient is also calculated and interpreted in the same manner that price elasticity of supply and demand are. The elasticity of the demand side for both labor and financial markets can also be calculated using these equations.